Hi, everyone. It's Ms. Palmer here, and we're continuing on with Unit 4, Money, Banking, and Monetary Policy. So showing the effects of monetary policy graphically, three related graphs. We have the money market graph, investment demand, and aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So here it goes. All right, here are the three graphs that you'll use to model. So all of these you already know about, the supply and demand of money we just went over in the last lesson. Investment demand we went over in the lesson beforehand. And aggregate demand and aggregate supply, we went over that in the last unit. So here we have at 5% and the interest rate, you have the supply and demand of money here. Demand is a negative sloping curve for money. The supply of money is fixed and that's why it's vertical. Um, at 5%, you've got an investment demand. So this is the, at 5%, this is the quantity of investment demanded on the horizontal. And then at uh, current price levels, aggregate supply and demand intersect here, and this is the quantity at equilibrium. Okay. The Fed increases the money supply to stimulate the economy. One, interest rates decrease, investment decreases, I mean increases, sorry. So let's go back. So the Fed increases the money supply to stimulate the economy. And the first thing that happens, interest rates decrease, investment increases, and aggregate demand, GDP, and price level increases. So let's see how that works. So here we have number one, the money supply increases from SM1 M to SM1, therefore the interest rate decreases. So then it's gonna be extrapolated over here, down to 2% and the interest rate drops to 2% in the other diagram and for investment demand. And therefore the quantity of investment demanded is increased at 2%. And then The aggregate demand curve shifts to the right, and therefore the price level increases and the quantity increases. Okay. All right, so that's our new graph, series of graphs. So be able to model these side by side like this. Okay, the Fed decreases the money supply to slow down the economy. The opposite will happen on all three of these diagrams from before. So interest rates increase, investment decreases, aggregate demand, GDP, and price level decrease. So let's see what happens on the graphically. So SM, the money supply decreases to SM1, therefore, the new interest rate is at 10%, extrapolate that over and what happens? Less quantity of investment is demanded. And then aggregate demand shifts to the left and price level and GDP decrease. Okay, wait, why should the Fed ever want to slow down the economy? to fight inflation. The role of the Fed is to take away the punch bowl just as the party gets going. Every party needs a poop. That's why we invited the Fed. How government stabilizes the economy. Okay, so another cartoon. They've got monetary policy in their toolbox and they'll use uh, open market operations, discount rate or reserve ratios to control it or Fiscal policy, spending versus taxes, which we discussed in the last unit. Okay. How the Fed stabilizes the economy with monetary policy, they use reserve ratios, the discount rate and open market operations. These are the three shifters of money supply. Three shifters of money supply. 
So the Fed adjusting the money supply by changing any one of the following. Setting the reserve requirements, the ratios. How much the bank holds out of the savings deposits. Two, lending money to banks and thrifts, discount rate. And three, open market operations, buying and selling bonds. The Fed is, is not now chaired by Janet Yellen. That's an old slide. Okay, number one, the reserve requirement. If you have a bank account, where is your money? Only a small percent of your money is held in reserve. The rest of your money has been loaned out by the bank to other people. This is called the fractional reserve banking system. The Fed sets the amount the banks must hold. The reserve requirement or reserve ratio is the percent of deposits that banks must hold in reserve, the percent they cannot loan out. They have to keep it in the bank. When the Fed increases the money supply, it increases the amount of money held in bank deposits. As banks keep some of the money in reserve and loans out their excess reserves, the loan eventually becomes deposits for another bank that will loan out their excess reserves. Money multiplier, another formula you'll have to memorize and know how to use. So example, assume the reserve ratio in the US is 10%. You deposit 1,000 in the bank. The bank must hold $100. Those are required reserves. That's 10% of the $1,000. The bank lends out 900 to Bob, excess reserves. The Bob deposits the 900 in his bank and Bob's bank must hold $90. It loans out 810 to Jill. Jill deposits 810 into her bank. So far, the initial deposit of 1,000 has caused creation of another 1,710, Bob's 900 and Jill's 810. The money multiplier formula is this. Money multiplier equals one over the reserve requirement ratio. Okay, take a picture of this slide. You'll have to memorize this formula. Example, if the reserve ratio is 0.20, the money supply increases $2 billion. How much the money supply will the money supply increase? Got it? Okay, using the reserve requirement, if there is a recession, should the Fed, what should the Fed do to the reserve requirement, explain the steps. And two, if there's inflation, what should the Fed do to re the reserve requirement? Explain the steps. Okay, so in the first one, if there is a recession, what should the Fed do to re the reserve requirement? Decrease the reserve ratio. Banks hold less money and have more excess reserves. Two, banks create more money by loaning out excess. And three, money supply increases, interest rates fall, and aggregate demand goes up. All right, let's go back. So if there's inflation, what should the Fed do to res the reserve requirement? And here are the steps. Increase the reserve ratio. And by one, banks hold more money and have less excess reserves. Two, banks create less money. And then money supply decreases, interest rates go up, and aggregate man goes down, okay? All right, I'd take a picture of this slide as well. Two, the discount rate. The discount rate is the interest rate that the Fed charges commercial banks. For example, if the bank, if Bank of America needs $10 million, they borrow it from the US Treasury, which the Fed controls but they must pay it back, back with a 3% interest rate. So the Fed is really the banker to the banks. To increase the money supply, the Fed should what? The discount rate, easy money policy. To decrease the money supply, the Fed should do what? 
to the discount rate type money policy. Got it? Okay, and the first one, to increase the money supply, the Fed should decrease the discount rate. All right, to decrease the money supply, the Fed should increase the discount rate. So take a picture of this slide as well. Think about it. Open market operations. Open market operations are when the Fed buys or sells government bonds or securities. This is the most important and widely used monetary policy. To increase the money supply, the Fed should do what to government securities? To decrease the money supply, the Fed should do what to government securities? So they're either they're going to buy or sell. Okay, so to increase the money supply, the Fed should buy government securities. To decrease the money supply, the Fed should sell government securities or bonds. All right? How are you going to remember? Buy big, buying bonds increases the money supply. Sell small, selling bonds decreases the money supply. So take a picture of this slide so you remember this. Okay, the reserve requirement is 25% and the banks hold no excess reserves and an open market sale of 400,000 of government securities, the Federal Reserve will do what? <laughs> Backwards, uh, decrease the money supply by up to 1.6 million. All right, and then to counteract a recession, the Federal Reserve should buy securities on an open market and lower the discount rate. So for this, this problem above, you're gonna have to plug this into the formula in order to get this answer. So be able to derive that answer and back, back the numbers in, okay? Oops, let's go back. All right, got it? Next slide. Okay, the purchase of bonds by the Federal Reserve will have the greatest um, direct, the greatest effect on real gross domestic product if which of the following situations exist in the economy? The required reserve ratio is low and the interest rate has changed, has a large effect on the investment spending. Okay. All right. All right. In the short one, which of the following would occur to bond prices and interest rates if a central bank bought bonds through open market operations? Bond prices would increase and interest rates would decrease. Here's some more practice. Don't forget the money multiplier. So if the reserve requirement is 0.5 and the Fed sells 10 million of bonds, what will happen to the money supply? If the reserve requirement is 0.1 and the Fed buys 10 million bonds in bonds, what will happen to the money supply? If the Fed decreases the reserve requirement from 0.50 to 0.20, what will happen to the money multiplier? Okay, the federal funds rate is an interest rate that banks charge one another for one day loans of reserves. The Fed can't simply tell banks what interest rate to use. Banks decide on their own. The Fed influences them by setting a target rate and using open market operation to hit that target. The federal funds rate fluctuates due to the market conditions, but it is heavily influenced by monetary policy. In other words, the buying and selling of bonds. So here's the uh, a flow chart or a, um, a chart of federal funds rate uh, from 1954 to 2014. Okay, so explain the differences between 79 and 2007. Let's see, 1979, 789, right there, it peaked out, and 2007. Okay, it peaked out here, but it's a lot less in percentage rates. Okay. Okay, if you wish to give, get receive a policy overview, um, go ahead and go online and Google um, Jacob Clip Clifford's policy overview uh, of 
fiscal and monetary policy, and you should be able to pull up this this uh, YouTube video. It's it's quite good. Here's another practice FRQ from the 2009 exam. Take a photograph of this and the rubrics coming up so that you can solve it and back your answer in. This question involves the Phillips curve, the Federal Reserve questions, all sorts of things here. Okay, so here's part of the rubric. Here's the rest of it. Here's part B of the free response, practice FRQ. We're talking about the reserves in a banking system and the change in the money supply. So snap a photo of this. I believe I have the rubric coming up. Yes, here it is. Okay, good. And there may be one more slide of this as well. Nope. Okay, that was it. All right, so the next free response question is coming up. So take a photograph of this. Again, it has to do with commercial banking, demand deposits, and money supply. So I have to be able to model this and come up with all the answers. Oh, okay. So um, that's pretty much it uh, for today's lecture. I hope you have a really wonderful day and uh, Make sure you stop by in my office hours if you have any questions or need additional help. And uh, again, Ms. Palmer signing out. Have a great day. See you in the next lecture.